Hello, my name is Dr. Joe Wilson, and today we're going to talk about online VR assessment. Assessment is something that VR counselors may be uncomfortable with. Typically, you send VR consumers to an assessment professional. But the goal of this webinar is to make you more comfortable with VR assessment and to utilize the online assessments that are available. Because if you think about it, assessment is one of the most essential parts of VR counseling. Assessments are needed to determine a person's eligibility and their strengths and functional limitations, which is necessary to do the counseling that you do with your consumers. If you think about assessment, there are functional capacity areas that you have to know about. You need to know about the consumer's communication ability, mobility, self-care ability, interpersonal skill, self-direction, work skills, as well as their work tolerance. Assessment gives you information about the functional limitations and strengths of each VR consumer. And this is so important as you move to goal setting and career planning with your consumers. So today we're going to focus on online VR assessment. And my message to you is you can do it. I know that you prefer to contract out assessment to professionals like vocational evaluators, but it's a skill that you need to learn and you need to be comfortable with it. We're really suggesting here a whole change in the way you approach VR counseling. There are a large number of online assessments available. And given that it will help you save time and yet get the information that you need about your consumer when you want it, you don't have to wait for a report to come from some professional. We really encourage you to consider the use of online assessments. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to access, score, and interpret the most widely used assessment instruments. Now, when we think about assessment, there are many different ways to assess the consumer. You can observe the consumer. You can do it formally with a checklist. You can do it informally. You can observe their mobility and their interpersonal skills. You can observe their ability to communicate. You can also use interviews. Interviews, again, can be formal or informal, but again, it'll allow you to assess these functional capacity areas. In an interview, you can assess communication, mobility. You can ask questions about self-skill, about work skills, about self-direction and work tolerance. You can also observe their interpersonal skills. Another way of assessing your consumer is to review the records, if they come with records. These records are vital to helping you figure out what other assessments you might need. Knowing that there are these functional capacity areas, if you find that there's an assessment missing, or you suspect that the person might have a mental health or a substance abuse problem, you can then assign an online assessment to the consumer. Finally, there's testing. Testing is a more formal way of getting information about your consumer that involves using a published instrument. So we're going to focus really on formal assessments today. And if you look at the definition of a formal assessment, it's a published instrument that has a prescribed set of procedures for administration that you have to follow. And what we find is that when we look at 
assessment and formal testing, that is the instruments used for assessing, they actually assess in seven areas related to career planning. Academic performance or achievement, cognitive abilities, including intelligence, memory, central control, behavioral, social, and emotional issues, vocational interests, vocational aptitudes, occupational competencies, as well as physical and functional capacities. There are instruments in place, formal instruments, that allow you to assess these areas of functionality. Many, many of them are available online. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to talk about online assessments. When we look at the different types of VR assessments available, as I said, they tend to fall under these categories. Achievement, remember, has to do with academic preparation. Aptitude refers to vocational potential. Vocational interest is measured in, in, by a number of different instruments that we're going to talk about today, as well as work values. Personality refers to the way a person typically responds in an environment. Intelligence refers to a person's innate hardwired abilities. We also have assessment instruments that measure aspects of behavioral health, including mental health and substance abuse. And we have ways of assessing instruments to assess living skills. Now, what happens when you get these assessments is that often when you look at them, you'll see that somebody might, for example, be high in intelligence and low in achievement. And you need to learn to work with these assessments so that you can help, a per help your consumer do planning. For example, that person that is high in intelligence and low in achievement might be a person who would do very well in an academic setting. And so your goals and career planning for that individual might include training or going back to school um, for more education. These assessments interact and support each other, and they really are important tools for you as you counsel the consumer, help the consumer set goals, and make career decisions. What we did is we surveyed VR counselors in Southwest Ohio, as well there have been a couple of national surveys conducted on um, assessment instruments that VR counselors use. And for achievement instruments, now remember achievement is measuring academic experience, academic performance to date. These achievement measures, um, there are some that many people recognize and use. For example, the RAT is one, the one on top. And as you look at this list I have in front of you, you'll notice that some of them are starred, and the starred instruments are the ones that are most often used by VR counselors, or at least they're instruments that the VR counselors recognize or said that they've heard of. And as well, then, the more stars that they have, the more recommended these come. Now, when we asked the counselors to tell us the instruments, we didn't give them a list of instruments. They weren't picking the instruments out of a list. We asked them, tell me an achievement instrument that you use. Tell me an instrument that you use to assess achievement. And they had to pull the instrument's name out of their head. And sometimes they could, but when they did, these are the ones that they gave us, and as I said, the ones with stars are the ones that they told us most often. In terms of aptitude testing, remember aptitude measures vocational potential. What we find is, hands down, most VR counselors had heard of the CAPS, 
had used the caps were familiar with the results of the caps. There are a few others that they also have heard of or listed as ones that they've used, the career scope, the computer operator programming aptitude battery, as well as the Minnesota paper form board test. In terms of vocational interest, the one, again, that most VR counselors mentioned when we asked them to name an assessment instrument that measured vocational interest is the COPS, the Career Occupational Preference System. But many, many of them also mentioned the self-directed search, the Career Assessment Inventory, and the Becker Reading Free Interest Inventory. In terms of work values, a lot of the VR counselors had heard of or used the COPES. Now again, you notice there aren't any um, assessment instruments here with two stars, so this is not an area where a lot of counselors know about assessment instruments, but there are assessment instruments out there to measure work values. And then finally, in terms of personality, we found that most VR counselors didn't measure personality, couldn't tell us a personality assessment instrument. And when they did, it was uniformly the Myers-Briggs is what they heard of. But it might be that personality that is the way a person usually reacts in an environment can tell you a lot about the person and the environment in which the person might best function. Intelligence assessment is usually conducted and should be conducted by a professional, either a, either a vocational evaluator or a psychological professional um, who is certified to give intelligence testing. But again, Intelligence assessment can tell us a lot about what kinds of plans we can make in terms of the consumer's goals and educational training. Mental health assessment is not something VR counselors um, do, typically do. And when we ask them to tell us about mental health assessments or substance abuse assessments, they gave us the ones that are listed, but again, they're not starred, so not very many VR counselors were able to pull up the names of these assessments. I have SASE listed, listed there. Some counselors did point it out, but I, I, I did mention it, but I want to point it out to you because the SASE, the Substance Abuse Subtle Screening Instrument, is a screening instrument that's available online. It's in many languages, including American Sign Language. So it's one that can be used. You don't have to be a mental health professional to use it. And it's one that can be used if you suspect substance abuse um, issues. I tried to be as comprehensive as I could. I tried to include assessments that I know that VR counselors have heard of and that evaluation experts use when we're thinking about picking out an assessment instrument, because really the purpose of this webinar is to help you become comfortable in using online assessments, as well as um, figuring out, well, which of the available assessments should I use? But if we think about what is the best assessment instrument that we can use, the assessment instrument needs to be reliable, which means that no matter how many times you give it, you get the same answer. It needs to be fair. And that means it needs not to be biased, that there's not one population that's going to do more poorly on the assessment than another. It needs to be valid. That is, it needs to measure what it says it measures. If it's a depression inventory, it needs to be measuring depression, not anxiety. It needs to be cost effective. It needs to be not too long, maybe not too short, but especially not too long for this population. It needs to be well matched to the qualifications of the person who's giving the assessment. 
I'm going to be showing you some online um, assessment instruments. And one of the nice things about it, it tells us who, what kind of qualifications do you need? Do you need a doctorate degree? Do you need to be licensed? Who can give the assessment? The assessment should be easy to administer. It should provide results that are easy to understand. And it should be appropriate for the needs of the individual being assessed. For example, if it's a person who is deaf and the person has low reading ability it sh and they are fluent in ASL, we should have an instrument then that is an ASL. I wanted to say something about career assessment because much, much of the assessment that's done focuses on career assessment, which makes lots of sense for um, vocational rehabilitation counselors. And as I said before, the CAPS, COPS, COPS group is really the most popular, the most recognized of the assessments. And it actually is a three part assessment. There's a part called, that measures professional interests, that's called the COPS. One that measures abilities, see the A in there, CAPS, and then work values, COPS. And you can give them individually, but most often they're given together and the results are summarized in a, in a single profile. And the profile ends up giving you a cluster of occupations that the person might be good at or might have the potential to be good at. And they have this system. They've put together a whole bunch of job clusters and then they assess the consumer and then say, this cluster would be really good for this consumer. And then they give some perhaps educational um, goals that the person needs to have, planning, training programs for that um, career. There is actually an online COP system. So you can actually send your consumers to the online system. Now this system requires continuous, uninterrupted access to the internet. So the person has to sit down and complete all of these in one sitting. And if they have, uh, uh, you know, internet service that's not reliable, probably shouldn't be doing the test online in that situation. The interest test takes about 20 minutes. The abilities test takes about 50 minutes. And the values test takes about 20 minutes. As a counselor, you can order these tests, pay, and then bill um, the system for the test. But you see that it's not cheap um, to do these tests. I've really become enamored with the ONET toolkit. It's an online toolkit. There are five tools that are available, and three of them are actually online. The Work Importance Locator and the Interest Profiler are paper versions, but the other three are online career exploration tools. And what's really nice about the ONET system is that you can give it to the consumer as homework. The consumer goes on and, and does these profilers. And then the program leads the consumer through so that the consumer makes decisions and does some grouping and reaches the conclusion by themselves without having somebody say, oh, you took these tests and here are the results. Instead, the person is there and they're working through, as I said, making some decisions and developing their own portfolio. And so what happens with the ONET is it tells the consumer, this is what's really important to you. It tells the consumer, this is what you can do well. And it also tells the consumer, this is what you said you like to do. And on the basis of this, 
here are some careers for you. Another thing I like about the ONET is based on the consumer's level of functioning. It also classifies occupations within a job zone level. And so you can see then the job zones are based on preparation needed all the way from no preparation needed to extensive preparation needed. The thing that I like best about the ONET, and I, if you talk to um, vocational evaluators out in the field, they like the ONET very well as well for this reason. The ONET is actually developed by contractors to the federal government. And it makes use of what's called the, the Dictionary of Occupational Titles that was produced by the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor has 12,000 classification of occupational titles. And what ONET does is taken these 12,000 and boiled them down into 1,100 or so occupational units. And so what's really beautiful about this system, unlike the caps copes cop system, where you have this arbitrary clustering of occupations, for the ONET system, it's really based on government um, stratifying um, levels. And so um, it's, it's, we find it to be much more versatile. As I said, it's free, and it allows the consumer to take some control over the career planning. But if you want to do it, do Caps, Copes, Cops online, you can sure do that. One place that I'd like to recommend that you go to is the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago's Rehabilitation Measures Database. And I have the URL there for you. And this is an amazing database. It was developed to help clinicians as well as researchers identify assessment instruments for all phases of rehabilitation. And what's really beautiful about it is it for each instrument, it tells you the psychometric properties, that is, which populations has it been found to be reliable and valid for. It gives you instructions for how to administer and score the assessment. And it also gives you a representative bibliography with citations for every measure. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take you to this website. And when we go to the website, and if you click on the button called Instruments, look at this amazing list of instruments. Look at how many instruments are available. And if you look, there are actually a hundred pages of assessments listed on this website. It's truly amazing. If you look along the top of the web page, for each assessment, it gives the title of the assessment. There's actually a link either to, directly to the instrument or a link to a link where you can purchase the instrument. It tells you the length of the test the cost of the test, and I always go for the ones that are free, if I can. It tells you the diagnoses for which it is found to be most psychometrically valid. It gives areas of assessment, the type of training required for that assessment, and if available, it gives you the instrument in PDF format. Again, it's really an amazing resource. I would use this page if I knew the title of the assessment I wanted. So if I wanted the Beck Depression Inventory, I'd go to like page three or four, find the Beck Depression Inventory, and access it that way. If you don't know the title of the assessment, if you want to know, well, what assessment instruments are available, when you go to this opening page, you'll see that there is a search, an area where you can search. It's right here in the top center of the page. You can identify the test then by typing in key search terms. 
If you have a consumer with a specific disability, you can also type in that type of disability and you can find tests that have been shown to be psychometrically valid with that disability. This is an amazing resource. It's free and it's got a wealth of tests that are available for you to use with your consumers. And I want to give a plug now for some of the resources we have at the SARTI program at Wright State University. We are in the process of putting together some assessments that are validated for use with deaf individuals. And we have a grant, a NIDER grant, um, that is supporting this work. But we suspect that by June 2016, we'll have online and available for you a number of VR assessments that can be used with deaf VR consumers. And you can see them here, the GAIN, the AUDIT, the DAST, the RIOT, the BDI, the Rosenberg Self-Esteem Scale, the Satisfaction with Life Scale, and the ONET are all in the process now of being translated into American Sign Language and being validated for use with individuals who are deaf. I want to come now and talk about the ONET because, as I said earlier, I really like this instrument. I think it's very, very useful. It's had 30 years of development. It is um, free and it has wonderful resources. You can find the ONET resources at this website. ONET offers so much information regarding jobs and potential careers for VR consumers. The ONET program is the nation's primary source of occupational information. Central to the program is the ONET database, which contains information on hundreds of standardized and occupation-specific descriptors. The database which is available to the public at no cost, is continually updated. Information from this database forms the heart of ONET Online. And you can see here's the home page for ONET Online, which is an interactive application for exploring and researching occupations. The database also provides the basis for ONET's career exploration tools a set of valuable assessment instruments that we're going to be looking at next. There are a couple of search engines that allow a consumer to identify an occupation of interest. Here under occupation search, you can type in a keyword, or if you know the code of a, um, a ONET job, you can put it in here. There's a find occupation search, an advanced search, and a crosswalk search. The advanced search allows you to look for a job based on one of its descriptors. The crosswalks search gives information on apprentices, military op opportunities, and other related topics. In the find occupations, I really like this bright outlook um, search. If you go to that, You'll see under this bright outlook, you'll see that there's a number of job categories, jobs that are experiencing rapid growth, jobs that have numerous job openings, new and emerging job opportunities. So I really like the bright outlook because if you're looking for a job and you want to do something where you have the best chances of finding a job, or growing in the job, this is a good place to look. The ONET program has two features that work together to create the ONET database. The ONET content model and the ONET taxonomy. The ONET content model defines the features of an occupation as a standardized, measurable set of variables called descriptors. 
Every occupation requires a different mix of knowledge, skills, and abilities and is performed using a variety of tasks and activities. These distinguishing characteristics of an occupation are described by the ONET content model. This hierarchical model has six domains describing the day-to-day -day aspects of the job and the qualification and interests of a typical worker. This model expands to 277 descriptors. And you can see here the six domains three that are worker-oriented, three that are job-oriented, occupation-specific domains, and then cross-occupation um, descriptors. You can explain the interactive content model to see the range of occupation descriptors in the ONET database. While the content model defines the information structure for a single occupation, the ONET taxonomy defines the set of occupations across the world of work. SOC stands for Standard Occupational Classification. Based on the Standard Occupational Classification, the ONET taxonomy currently includes 974 occupations. And very briefly, I just want to show you that actually it has 1,110 occupations listed. 974 titles actually have lots of data associated with them. 136 of the occupations are listed by title only. ONET also makes career exploration tools available to use with this database. We've covered these already. These tools can be found at this web address. ONET has designed a set of self-directed career exploration tools to help workers consider and plan career options more effectively. They are also designed for use by students who are exploring the school-to-work transition. The assessment instruments, which are based on a whole person concept, include the Work Importance Locator, the Work Importance Profiler, the Computerized Interest Profiler, the Interest Profiler, and the Ability Profiler. These instruments will help individuals identify their work-related interests, what they consider important on the job, and their abilities in order to explore those occupations that relate most closely to those attributes. Users of the tools may link to more than 800 occupations described by the ONET database. This allows individuals to make a seamless transition from assessing their interests, work values, and abilities to matching their job skills with the requirements of occupations in their local labor market. Printed versions of the Ability Profiler, Interest Profiler, and Work Importance Locator tools and their supporting documents are available for purchase from the U.S. Government Printing Office. Electronic components of the Ability Profiler, Interest Profiler, Computerized Interest Profiler, Work Importance Locator, and the Work Importance Profiler tools along with documentation and supplementary reports are available from the ONET website for free. Training materials are also available on the website. For online assessment, only three of five ONET tools are necessary. The Computerized Interest Profiler, the Ability Profiler, and the Work Importance Profiler. Notice how these instruments align nicely with the COPS system, which consists of three measures, professional interests, abilities, and the work values. We talked earlier about the COPS system being the most used, most highly recognized of the career exploration assessment tools. But we just want to show you that the ONET has instruments that really are analogous to the COPS system measures. 
the work importance profiler is very much like the work values, the COP system. The computerized interest profiler is the same as or measures the same components as the professional interests. And the ability profiler of ONET's, um, in ONET's tool chest is very much like the CAPS, the abilities measure of the COPS program. You can find the ONET exploration tools at this website. Let's talk about the three instruments that are available online and that are analogous to the COPS system. First, the ONET Ability Profiler. The ONET Ability Profiler measures nine job relevant abilities. It's a career exploration tool that helps clients plan their work lives. The ONET Ability Profiler uses a paper and pencil format and computerized scoring. Individuals can use ONET Ability Profiler results to identify their strengths and areas for which they might want to receive more training and identify occupations that fit their strengths. You're looking now at the home page for the ONET Career Exploration Tools. And we can ha get access to any of these tools here in the select box. And we're talking about the Ability Profiler right now. So let's just look at this. And you can see that for the Ability Profiler, there's an overview. There's information on administration, scoring, and then the training information. In terms of administration, you will need both the ONET Ability Profiler instrument materials and the ONET Ability Profiler administration materials. You can download these instruments as PDF files or order printed copies from the government printing office. And let me just show you that really fast here. If we go here, you can see then that you can download both um, the administration materials and the instrument materials. They're located right here. They're um, compatible with Windows programming. Or you can order them online. You can see as well that you can do it for professional reproduction. There's a print shop version. Or if you're just going to be downloading it on a desktop, you've got it here. To score the ONET Ability Profiler, and we're going to just hit scoring here, it'll show you, you will need the ONET Ability Profiler scoring materials. And again, there's a window executable file here. The scoring program software as well as the scoring program user's guide are here. The user's guide gives information on how to score the Ability Profiler. The ONET Computerized Interest Profiler is a vocational interest assessment instrument administered by computer. Users receive an accurate, reliable profile of their vocational interests that provides valuable self-knowledge about their vocational interests, fosters career awareness, and provides a window to the entire world of work via the ONET online database. You can see here that it measures six types of occupational interests. This instrument is a self-assessment career exploration tool that can help people discover the type of work activities and occupations that they would like and find exciting. Users identify and learn about broad areas most relevant to themselves. The instrument is composed of 180 items describing work activities that represent a wide variety of occupations as well as a broad range of training levels. People can use their interest results to explore the world of work. The ONET Interest Profiler is also available in a paper and pencil version. The benefits of the 
computerized interest profiler is that it can be self-administered and self-interpreted. It can be administered on a computer or over a computer network. It can be used alone or with other ONET career exploration tools, and it can also be used with privately developed instruments. It takes about 30 minutes to complete. The third ONET instrument that I want to talk about today is the ONET Work Importance Profiler. This is a computerized self-assessment career exploration tool that allows consumers to focus on what is important to them in a job. It helps people identify occupations that they may find satisfying based on the similarity between their work values and the characteristics of the occupations. And you can see that it measures six types of work values. The Work Importance Profiler is administered by computer. Participants use the Work Importance Profiler to indicate the importance to them of each work need in two different steps. In step one, participants rank order the 21 work need statements by comparing them to one another and ordering them according to their relative importance. In step two, they rate the work needs by indicating whether or not the need is important, independent of the other work need statements. And again, I like it very much because of these benefits. It can be self-administered and self-interpreted. It can be administered via one, a single computer or computer network. It can be used alone or with a variety of other instruments. It takes 30 minutes to complete. If we go to the website and just look at it for a second, I want to look both at, we looked at the Ability Profiler already, but I want to look at the Computerized Interest Profiler. Again, just to show you, there's an overview, features of it, as well as the software that you need. It's very easy. You download the software and the information about the test items and scoring are located there in the software as well as in the user guide. Well, I also want to just quickly show you the Work Importance Profiler. It looks the same way. There's an overview. There's a section that talks about the features. And then again, the software, you can download it. And scoring information and self-interpretation information is located in the software as well as the user's guide. All of this is available online for free. These resources and tools have been developed based on over 30 years of research by leading vocational psychologists. They've undergone extensive and thorough development with stakeholder input during all stages of development and include construct validity and reliability evidence. These tools and resources have been extensively pilot tested and they're free, they're here online, and we heartily recommend them to you. Another great resource for online assessment materials is the Rehabilitation Measures Database from the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, which we talked about earlier in this webinar. What I want to do right now is I'd like to apply a case study to this database to show you how versatile and useful this database is for obtaining the measures and assessments that you could help you in your work. Let's look at this case involving a young woman named Casey who's 19 years old and who has cerebral palsy. She has just graduated from high school where she was mainstreamed in regular classrooms with a teacher's aide assigned to her to assist her in the classroom. Her academic performance was about average or a little lower in the B minus C plus range, and she graduated from high school with a 2.6 GPA. While in high school, her social life was restricted and she was excluded from most social functions, including private parties. Her teacher's aide, who worked with her exclusively for the past two years, noted in Casey's file that Casey appeared to be a bit depressed. 
Casey has not been seen or assessed by a VR counselor before. If this were your client, what kind of assessments would you consider? Of course, what you would, might typically do is refer Casey to a professional vocational evaluator. And it is important to get the professional opinion of a trained assessment specialist. However, you might want to get some quick information about Casey's status, including a screen for depression, to get a sense of what Casey's needs, strengths, and barriers are. You can go to RIC's Rehabilitation Measures database and use their search engine to find assessment tools that are appropriate and have been validated for use with individuals with cerebral palsy. Let's go to that database right now. You've seen this search page already. I showed it earlier in the webinar. This is the search page for the Rehabilitation Measures database. You can see that we can refine our search in four ways. The area of assessment, the diagnosis, the length or duration of the test, as well as the cost of the test. Under assessment, I'm going to click on it here, you can see there are literally dozens of assessment areas of ass that you can select. The same is true for diagnosis. For length of the test, you have only four categories to choose from. And for cost of the test, you can choose free, not free, or no preference. For Casey, let's not select an area of assessment or length of test. But under diagnosis, let's select cerebral palsy. And under cost, let's select free. If you have a particular tool in mind, you can type it here in the search box. But we're going to leave that blank. And let's just hit search. There we go. And if you look, you can see that it comes up with 17 assessment instruments that are appropriate for individuals with cerebral palsy. And we can look them over. You'll notice that they're associated with um, how spasticity, res response to medication, mobility, impact of the disability, life satisfaction, and then medical issues or physical issues related to the disability. Remember, we selected only free tools. And no depression screeners were identified in the search. Although, if we look here, the sickness impact profile, the life satisfaction questionnaire, the community integration questionnaire, and the ICF measure of participation and activity screener all may give you a sense for general mental health status. The ICF measure of participation and activity screener, also known as the Impact S, is a self-report measurement instrument to assess experience limitations in activities and participation. As you can see, there are reviews available for each instrument. And the database provides links to each of these scales, except no link is provided for, for example, the impacts S. But if you look up here at some of the other ones we've already picked out and identified, for example, the life satisfaction questionnaire, you can see that there's a review of it, which gives us some of the psychometric data about validity and reliability with this population. And you can actually also look directly 
to this questionnaire. If you look at this questionnaire, you'll see that there is a series of questions about life satisfaction. And you can see as well that they would select one of these categories. To score this questionnaire, you get the average for each question. So if they selected three all the way down, the average would be three. And then we say that if the mean score is between one and four, we say they're dissatisfied. And if their score, their mean score is five or six, we say they're satisfied. There's some other information that you can get too if you look online and read about the life satisfaction questionnaire. If we were to type in depression as an additional search item, and I'm going to type in depression right here. And then we search. We're looking for a diagnosis of cerebral palsy, a free instrument that tells us about depression, and hit search. Only one instrument comes up. And it's the Life Satisfaction Questionnaire. Now, we can search another way as well. We can hit Area of Assessment, and we can pick Depression. And let's remove it from this search box. So now what we're doing is we're looking for depression as an area of assessment for someone with cerebral palsy. And we want a free assessment. And if I search for this, again, we get the Life Satisfaction Questionnaire. Now, the only thing we haven't played with is the cost. And if I hit no preference for the cost, so now what I want is I want something that might assess this depression in an individual with cerebral palsy. And I don't have any preference about the length of the test or the cost of the test. If I search for that instrument, lo and behold, the only thing I get is the Life Satisfaction Questionnaire. And as I said, it is a nine question instrument that takes six to 30 minutes to complete. It's free, it doesn't require any training to use it, and it has been validated for use with individuals with cerebral palsy. So as we close today's webinar, I just want to summarize some of the highlights of what you learned today. First of all, I want to remind you that there are a large number of assessments available online for your use. We reviewed types of assessments today, including types of VR assessments. We also discussed the characteristics of an ideal assessment instrument. We talked about measuring career assessment and the important components of career assessment. We also looked at online resources that are available for career assessment, as well as other types of VR assessment. We focused especially on the resources and career assessment tools provided by ONET and by the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago's Rehabilitation Measures Database. This webinar series has been funded by a grant from the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research. Well, this brings us to the end of today's webinar. I hope you found this helpful. And I hope I've motivated you to consider using online assessment. I also hope I've helped you feel more comfortable about using assessment because it really is an essential part of what you do. It helps you do better goal setting and career planning with your consumers. Thank you for your attention today. And please feel free to contact us by email if you have any questions.